And then fairly well-known side effect is excess storage of fat, which uh, is generally in what is called the central locations, like over the abdomen. So excess abdominal fat is one common finding in people with excess hormones like Cushing's disease. Hey, this is Dr. Gary Pepper, and this is Dr. P. Reilly. This is the audio component of my podcast, but if you would like to see the uh, slides that are related to this, you can hop over to YouTube, Metabolism123, and view the related slides, but I think you'll get everything you really need just by listening. The adrenal gland seems a bit obscure, but it's vital for survival and has major impact on our day-to-day -day life. So I hope you find it really helpful and fascinating. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can email info at metabolism.com and we'll try to answer your questions or you can keep an eye on this channel for further updates. Thanks a lot and enjoy listening. The mighty adrenal, yeah. The adrenal gland makes a multitude of very important hormones that keep us alive, and I think we really need to know a bit more about it and how it could affect our health. So how can the adrenal hormones affect our body? Well, in a multitude of ways, uh, the connective tissue, that's our skin and bone, um, are very susceptible to the effects of excess amounts of adrenal hormones like cortisol or synthetic forms like prednisone, uh, which can cause thinning of the bone, which is osteoporosis. Thinning of the skin can result in what are known as striae, which are basically purple stretch marks that generally appear on the abdomen, but it also can cause thinning of the lining of the stomach, which can cause ulceration and, and bleeding, gastric ulcer bleeding. Uh, mood changes uh, from too much or too little adrenal hormones like cortisol uh, can either range from mania to depression or to just melancholy or more mild forms of mood disturbance. The immune system is very sensitive to excess amounts of adrenal hormone like cortisol, and you can develop immune suppression from things, medications like prednisone and dexamethasone, which are uh, synthetic forms of the adrenal hormone. The cardiovascular system is very susceptible to much of cortisol and another adrenal hormone known as aldosterone. It can cause high blood pressure. Uh, too much of those hormones can also cause fluid retention, known as edema. And then fairly well-known side effect is excess storage of fat, which uh, is generally in what is called the central locations, like over the abdomen. So excess abdominal fat um, is one common finding in people with excess hormones like Cushing's disease. I mean, here are the here is a list of the hormones made by the adrenal. You mentioned cortisol, aldosterone is a different type of hormone, but it causes problems with fluid retention and electrolytes. DHEA is a, a very abundant hormone when we're younger, and it uh, is involved with just general health maintenance, but also the production of estrogen and testosterone. Catecholamines comes from the core part of the adrenal known as the medullary portion, and excess amounts of catecholamine, some people refer to it as adrenaline, but it really that's a mis misnomer, excuse me. Catecholamines can make your blood pressure go up and your heart race can make you feel nervous and shaky. And the sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone in smaller amounts than made by the ovary and testy, but they're still there and they can lead to excess hair growth uh, in conditions like uh, Cushing's disease, but also polycystic ovarian disease. Well, the story of the adrenal gland in terms of its regulation, which is very tight because, as I've been alluding to, too much or too little of these hormones can be devastating. 
So the uh, key to uh, regulation is right here uh, in the base of our brain. Uh, there's something called the pituitary hypothalamic axis, which is a, a dynamic duo of these uh, two essential areas within the base of the brain that control the production of uh, not only cortisol, but all kinds of other important hormones uh, that control the thyroid and things like growth hormone. So uh, the key hormone uh, from the pituitary gland that controls the adrenal is known as ACTH. And there's a condition of excess amounts of ACTH, which then leads to excess adrenal hormone called Cushing's. For those of you who are dog lovers or even cat lovers, I believe, uh, Cushing's is a much more common condition in uh, dogs and cats than it is in humans, fortunately. But some of uh, the uh, people who own dogs and cats uh, have been perhaps acquainted with what happens to their animals, to their pets, when the uh, Cushing's disease occurs. Now, what's interesting is that I believe in order to prevent the uh, problems that are associated with excess adrenal hormones like cortisol, that there's what we call a diurnal variation, which is controlled by the uh, hypothalamic pituitary axis. And what that means is that at certain times of the day, the cortisol, in this case, is very high in our blood as it uh, is important for our daily function, energy, strength. But by evening, the cortisol levels have come down dramatically so that this allows our body to rest. And it, for me, it seems like a roller coaster ride. And for many people, I believe, who experience life as a roller coaster ride, um, the hormones are peaking in the morning, and by bedtime, they're almost um, back to zero. And that is a, a very important feature in terms of diagnosis. Because in people with things like Cushing's disease, excess amounts of uh, naturally occurring hormones like cortisol, you can check the cortisol level at 11 at night or midnight. And if it's too high, that's an indication that the circadian rhythm is out of whack and is one of the hallmarks of things like Cushing's disease. So on the other side of the spectrum, adrenal insufficiency, what kinds of symptoms can you ex uh, expect? Well, I mentioned before low blood pressure um, with deficiency of cortisol. You can also experience unexplained weight loss, extreme fatigue, um, darkening of the skin, which is rare, but it's uh, related not to the cortisol effect, but to the effects of low cortisol on your pituitary gland. It's a little bit more complicated. Mood disturbances are common with uh, both high and low levels of cortisol. Low levels of adrenal hormone like cortisol, but also aldosterone is important here. Um, you can have uh, excess amounts of uh, potassium and low levels of sodium. And hypoglycemia is also associated with uh, low adrenal function. Now, I mentioned several times already that without our adrenals, without cortisol, we couldn't survive. But what about more minor disturbances of the adrenal gland? Do they exist? If they exist, how could that be affecting our daily health? That is a bit of a mystery, I think, still in this day and age. There's a lot of controversy about whether there is a intermediate loss of adrenal hormone, which could result into something we know uh, or is being termed um, adrenal fatigue, but more about that in a minute. So what causes uh, adrenal insufficiency? Well, the most common cause is what we would refer to as Addison's disease, which is where the immune system attacks our own adrenal gland. Um, infections can uh, impact, uh, including uh, fungal infections can cause the adrenal to be destroyed. Internal bleeding, which is more common in people on blood thinners, can 
uh, cause hemorrhage into the adrenal gland, radiation to the uh, abdomen and abdominal structures can destroy the adrenal gland. Uh, certainly, uh, surgery can cause uh, destruction if, in some cases, people have their adrenal glands removed. Um, medications can interfere with the adrenal function. Uh, one of, or more of the immune types, the new types of immune medications that are being used to combat various cancers, one of which I can think of as Keytruda, uh, can uh, cause adrenal uh, dysfunction. Any disease of the pituitary gland, tumors, hemorrhage, radiation can cause destruction of the pituitary, which can then lead to adrenal problems. And one area which um, is not a ambulatory problem of everyday people, but something that occurs during septic shock may be that the adrenal glands themselves uh, turn off. Now, um, I mentioned uh, a personal uh, side to this story. In 1977, when I was an intern, um, a case was admitted to our service of a young man who was blacking out, had unexplained weight loss, had episodes of low blood sugar. While in the hospital, we found he had high potassium. His wife related that she noticed that he was getting freckles, which he never had before, and he had very pale skin, and just generalized weakness. Well, fortunately, uh, we were able to make the diagnosis of Addison's disease, that is the immune destruction of the adrenal glands, and uh, he began uh, cortisol replacement therapy and made a total recovery. And it was this case, uh, which seemed so mysterious at first, which had such a happy ending, which was a uh, critical point in my career that got me started uh, in endocrinology. Now, as I mentioned before, could there be a milder form of adrenal insufficiency? And there is a long-standing debate whether such a thing exists, and it's been called adrenal fatigue. Now, I have to admit, up until fairly recently, I was also quite skeptical. I didn't really even pay much attention to the possibility. But as I've been thinking about it and researching, I found some really interesting stuff I'd like to share. Well, there's this major uh, review article that looked at 58 uh, different studies uh, that were considered reliable or well done scientifically studies. Uh, and the question that these studies were looking at was, is adrenal fatigue a valid medical diagnosis? Well, the title of the review article, and I think somewhat unfairly, is Adrenal Fatigue Does Not Exist, a Systematic Review. So I went and I dug into that article and looked at these 58 studies myself, and I was really surprised that uh, there was some what I would consider contradictory information. But I also want to point out, again, the widespread feeling in the medical communities that this does not exist. Uh, the, for example, the Mayo Clinic uh, website st states there is no evidence to support a disease entity of adrenal fatigue. And the Cedars-Sinai uh, website also calls it a medical myth. So we're delving into an area that gives doctors a, a big pain. So my concern is maybe had the experts been too quick to shut the door on uh, this possibility. And there we go, shutting the door in our one of our favorite uh, TV series. Anyway, so let's keep going here. Keep seeing Joey there. Okay, so multiple studies show abnormal adrenal responses in cases of people who have been selected for evaluation of extreme fatigue. Now, among that 58 studies that were reviewed, seven of the studies showed abnormal circadian rhythm of cortisol measure, measured in the uh, saliva. Two studies showed low DHEA levels. Two studies show low cortisol levels in the morning when they should be quite high. And one study showed low ACTH and cortisol levels in response to mental stress. So I consider that worthy of a second look. 
Now, looking further into this topic, we came across uh, very interesting findings in what is called overtrained uh, athletes. These are athletes who have uh, pushed their bodies to extreme limits over and over again, day in, day out. And what was found was that the adrenal function in these individuals was impaired. Now, it was impaired in response to or in uh, contrast to healthy, highly trained athletes who appear to be functioning at a higher level than normal. But what this suggests to me is that something's going on here. I mean, if highly trained athletes who overdo it uh, can have disorder of the adrenal function, well, maybe your everyday person who's under a lot of unusual stress, is not sleeping, is not eating, is losing weight, uh, has extreme mood uh, problems. Could that be sufficient in the average individual to result in defects in the cortisol, adrenal function? And could that just exacerbate their underlying problems? I think personally, you know, as an endocrinologist, as a physician, I would uh, think that it's a high possibility that that could be happening and that it really deserves more serious attention. So basically, I'm going to leave uh, with that in mind because I'd like to do another podcast on this topic as uh, more information becomes available. And um, I think if you have interest in the adrenal and how it might be affecting your health, I'd advise you to keep watch at metabolism.com. That's my website. And don't forget, uh, please subscribe to Metabolism123 channel. That's my channel. Or visit www.metabolism.com to see our audio podcasts. And uh, we also have an artificial intelligence app for people, which is free to use, which can help answer your questions. So it's a good deal, I think. So give it a, give it a try. And we'll be seeing you soon. Bye now. Uh, the contents uh, of this uh, podcast are for educational purposes only. And if you really have some concerns about your health or medical issues, please consult with your own health care provider.